What's up, guys, and welcome back to Scourge of War Waterloo, episode 36, part 4. All right, so uh, this is our fourth part in our series on the Battle of Waterloo as the Allies. We've been fighting for about five hours now, and uh, we have a little over 200,000 points, so about double what we need for a major victory. Uh, so far, we have turned back several major French assaults, some at uh, Hugo Mont, as well as a divisional attack uh, at the uh, uh, farmhouse of Papillot on our left, uh, and a core-sized attack by Derlon kind of in our center and our, our right center west of La Haye Sainte, uh, as well as uh, we've stopped a uh, cavalry charge by what looked like elements of Milhoud's corps. Uh, so that brings us to uh, where we are now at 16.30 or 4.30 in the afternoon. And uh, let's get this video rolling here. Uh, we better turn the sound down a little bit or it'll be a little too loud. There we go. All right. So, uh, all right, 16.30. Right around now is where I start wondering whether Grushi's going to show up or not. Um... There's no way for me to know because there's no notification or anything. So, but as I said, it has a uh, in part one of this series, it has a what seems like a pretty high chance. Uh, I've learned that it's about forty percent since I made uh, part one. Uh, but I, at the time, I said it was uh, around fifty percent or close to fifty percent, and then that's about what it feels like. Uh, so, all I'm going to do in case Grushi shows up is uh, just start moving some troops over to my. Uh, uh, on my left to start kind of facing eastward down this this road kind of right here like this is the road Grushi comes down uh, so we'll start turning some of our cavalry to face this way and uh, uh, if Grushi shows up it's not my intention to get into a fight with him uh, it, it would be tough to hold off Grushi uh, and uh, Napoleon so really what my goal is is just to set up some cavalry some cannon just to delay him force some of his units into square, uh, and, and just kind of pause him on his advance uh, until the Prussians show up. And if the Prussians, if, if Grushi shows up and starts making his way this way, then I'll throw the Prussians at him. Uh, and, and that will kind of, the Prussians and Grushi will kind of cancel each other out, and we'll just let them fight along kind of the northeastern part of the field, and, you know, it won't really affect us, and we'll still be holding our... Uh, objectives and and dealing with napoleon's force um now obviously i'm playing i'm playing this video after i've recorded the entire battle so i i, I do know what's going to happen uh but at the time i was playing there was no way for me to know whether grushi was actually coming or not this is just something i do every time i play the scenario i just kind of turn some troops to kind of face this way just in case grushi comes uh obviously yes i know whether he comes or not uh now, but I didn't at the time, and that, that's what matters. Um, so with things quiet at the Papalot front, I can kind of, I don't want to get too close to that French unit down there, or the remnants of Marcogne's division, uh, but it's certainly quiet enough on the left part of my line that I can start siphoning some troops off, uh, off the left part, as well as maybe some reserve troops, and just start sending some troops over there. Uh, uh, and I'm going to send a, a decent force, but I'm not going to strip my reserves raw, you know, and just deplete everything I've got. Uh, because even if the fight gets, even if the fight gets nasty for, you know, a, a, a little while, I, I'm not going to need to hold the uh, Grushi for long if he shows up, because the Prussians will show up shortly thereafter, and I can just send the whole Prussian corps at at, at Grushi's forces. So yeah, I'm just turning my cavalry to kind of face uh, northeasterly here and uh, bringing some infantry up kind of behind some of these hedgerows. Maybe we'll grab some of these guns that are really no longer doing anything at this point because Marcogne, there's nothing left but like three battalions, uh, four battalions. Uh, you know, he's got maybe a brigade out there. And they, you know, they've taken heavy losses. They, they don't seem like they want to get involved anymore. Papalot is likewise very quiet now. Um, all of Deruda's division is basically completely backed off so uh you know maybe we bring some guns up here you know and have and, and have kind of a artillery force here that uh you know could keep 
firing at Rushi even once, you know, uh, the Prussians engage them maybe and just, you know, set up a bit of a wall here just to make this kind of the, the, the you, you will not cross this line. And no sign of them yet, so don't see them. Don't know if they're coming or not, but again, this is just, if they don't come and, you know, by another hour or so, uh, you know, if I don't, still don't see them, I'll start to tear some of this down uh, and move it back. Um, but uh, it helps that a lot of my reserve is in no danger of needing to be committed on other parts of the line because, uh, one, my defenses have held very well, and two, the French attacks have been, uh, well, uh, shall we say less than uh, ferocious. Uh, what attacks they have made have been piecemeal and uh, not really a, a concentrated effort to really try and penetrate my defenses. Uh, their best effort was up here, as you can see by the amount of bodies the French have out here, and they still have some cavalry hanging around out here. Um, but it still really didn't penetrate my initial frontline troops. So a lot of my reserves are really in no danger of being committed. Uh, so uh, just checking, these guys have taken a few more losses. So maybe we'll back them up and see if they're, uh, because the cavalry at Hugo Mont now is, uh, much less aggressive than they were previously, so I'm not really expecting them to really make too many aggressive moves. And uh, nothing go, nothing coming so far. Uh, even if they are on the map, I can't see them yet, so because they'd be too far away, uh, they have to come into. Uh, they have to come into visual range first, so I probably wouldn't expect to see them until they were like around here, if they were coming. And I think they just come onto the road, the map from here, maybe. I just start more, or maybe they come in from here and then turn onto this road. Or uh, I don't actually know where they show up, uh, or if they just all appear on the map at once and they just start moving down this road. Um, but uh, they they would have to come close enough for my forces to spot them, uh, probably somewhere in here before they were in. Uh, in visual range. Uh, in the meantime, we're just keeping an eye on the French here. Uh, like I said, Papillot has really calmed down. Everything on the center has calmed down. Even Hugo Mont is relatively calm at this point. Uh, and so we're just continuing to kind of get our setup going here. Just moving some of our cavalry into position. And really, I have the cavalry out front because they're the, they're the fastest way to put a halt on an advance. If troops are coming down that road, uh, and they run into cavalry, they stop. They have to stop and form square. Um, and so cavalry is really a good way to just say, whoa, hold up. Take your time, fellas. You don't need to come down so fast. And that's really what we want because um, that will buy us the time to send the Prussians at them if they show up. Because as I said, uh, the Prussians at this point in the battle are now kind of, um, uh, they're not critical to the outcome of the battle. We are at nearly a quarter of a million points at this point. Uh, you know, and so, you know, we don't need Place Noir. We don't need to attack the French. We don't need to do anything at this point except hold our ground and hold these objectives and keep earning more points. So, if we have to send the Prussians at Grouchy and not at Place Noir, that's really no skin off our back as far as points go. Uh, you know, I will send the Prussians at Place Noir if Grouchy doesn't show up, just, just to have something to watch, really, because... Uh, the French appear to be very timid as far as coming on our lines, uh, coming and attacking our lines goes. Um, so if if Grouchy does not show, I will certainly throw the Prussians at Blasenois. Uh, if Grouchy does show, I will sh throw the Prussians at him. And that has the effect of basically canceling each other out. Grouchy is not a factor in the battle, and the Prussians aren't a factor in the battle. So we're back to where we're at. Uh, and that's ultimately... Uh, really what I'm aiming to do if Grushi shows up is just kind of keep him out of my hair. I don't care what goes on between him and the Prussians, so long as it doesn't affect what I've got going on over here with the Allied Army. Let 
Alright, so we're moving some guns. Like I said, things are relatively quiet along this portion of the line right now. Uh, you know, the, the area kind of to the, le uh, the left part of the ridge as well as the Papalot area. Very, very quiet. Not much going on, so... I'm sort of stripping my forces from behind the ridge that the French can't even see me doing uh, because I'm behind the ridge. And just kind of s slipping some of the rearward units and the artillery kind of uh, westward. Still nothing. You know, like I said, I, I'm just checking. I don't know whether he's coming or not. This is just something I do every time I play the scenario, so I'm not caught off guard if he does show up. And like, oh, wow, I wasn't even facing you, Grushi, huh? Which is exactly what happened the very first time I did play the scenario and got caught with that um, with that variant where Grushi showed up, and I had no idea that was even possible. And I wasn't even looking for him, and he just showed up on my left flank and just, you know caved about a third of it in before I even realized what was happening, uh, you know, and, and finally started to turn some troops to, to face him. Um, but yeah, the first time I, the first time I came across that variant, I suspect uh, everyone who comes across that variant the first time is not prepared for it unless they know about it, and I didn't. You know, it's not like there was any place I could go and see this scenario played out beforehand and, and kind of know what the events could be. There are no YouTube videos of anyone playing this battle all the way through. You know, this this will be the only one. You know, there aren't too many maniacs like me who would actually have the time and patience to actually put up, you know nine hours of the battle. You know, so there was no way for me to know when I first played the scenario that Grushi could, uh, in, in fact, appear. I, I expected the Prussians to appear because, of course, I, I, I knew the basic history of the battle. But so far as I knew, you know, Grushi was at Wavro, you know, miles away to the east. And, you know, so I never expected to see him show up. Uh, so yeah, the first time I played, uh, I played the scenario and got that variant, I was very, very shocked. <laughs> and uh, that was not the first time I actually played the scenario, but I, I think it was maybe the, I think it was maybe the third time I played it that I got that first Grishy variant. Some of our guns blasting away at this French cavalry that's hovering around by Hugomont. Now that I've got that square up there, uh, right by the wall, they're not actually on the wall, but since uh, uh, since I got them back there, the cavalry really doesn't have anything to do anymore. And there's no infantry uh, approaching the Hugomont area anymore, so there's no reason to have skirmishers up on the wall. So, alright, we're still in the clear. Maybe he's not going to come. But I don't usually stop looking for him until like an hour, you know, like 17.30. If I don't see Grushi by 1730, I'm pretty sure he's not coming. Sir Lowry Cole of the 10th Infantry Division. And this looks like one of his brigades under uh, Major General Sir John Lambert, who has the 10th Brigade of the 10th Infantry Division. And it looks like I'm going to send them over. I mean, I'm overdoing it a little bit here now. This is more than enough right here to hold off any advance... Uh, for a little while, but you know me, I'm one to overdo things, especially we're wheeling up three batteries here, we got uh, two in the rear here, and I think we're going to put one in front on the crossroads, and uh, all this, and we still don't even know if he's coming, you know, I just know that if he does come, this is, this is usually the road he comes down. So we've got some advanced cavalry out here to kind of stop them up 
uh, as they come come in range here to you know just you know stop them, make them form square, just pause them. And I think the Prussians come from somewhere way out here. So even when the Prussians do show up, I still have to keep holding. I would still have to keep holding Grushi for a while if he shows up, uh, because uh, the, the Prussians have to cross this this uh, river here to actually start advancing, uh, which is not such a bad thing because we kind of want to kind of draw Grushi's troops forward, because if we do, then when the Prussians come up, they're going to basically hit them in the flank while they're dealing with us. So, as you can see, very quiet at Papalot, uh, with the exception of, uh, you know, this unit and this unit. Most all the other units of Bruce and Pagos brigades have pulled completely back. Nobody's engaged at the moment. So, uh, yeah, everything's nicely quiet. Marcogne's division is back here. Still no sign of Grushi. Cavalry milling about outside of Hugomont here. So you can see my troops uh, in rear moving towards this uh, position by Lahai that I'm setting up here. And uh, Hugomont is certainly burning. It has sustained a lot of damage over the course of this battle, but uh, it's holding in there. It's fortunately not really being attacked anymore, as m most of the. Uh, Infantry has pulled completely away, and all we're really dealing with is cavalry, which that one square in the kind of courtyard area behind the wall uh, should be more than enough to hold. Uh, we also have some of Milhoud's cavalry still milling about out here, but we're formed in square, and there's really nothing they can do, so we're just kind of peppering them with artillery uh, here and there where we can, and just waiting to see uh, what the French uh, have in store for us next. They've already committed all of their first corps, most of their second corps, to uh, to the Hugo Mont fight, or at least half the second corps. And I mean, I know, um, you know, Bonaparte's division and, and some of, uh, and some of uh, Foy's division uh, have been engaged. None of Bachelor's uh, division um, has been engaged. So some of Rao's corps is still intact. We haven't seen the Imperial Guard yet. Uh, I wouldn't expect that attack until later. Um, if, if, it, if it happens. So uh, really what we're doing right now is just waiting to see if Grushi's going to show. That's kind of what's on my mind right now. Is he coming or is he staying? So, uh, all right, we've got two batteries wheeled up in position. And uh, maybe we can grab a third and put... The, this is kind of a high point on this crossroad here. So if we can get a battery up there, that would also be a nice place to uh, plant some guns. I'd be a little worried about infilotting fire from the Grand Battery, but the Grand Battery is pretty far away compared to here. So uh, we have one infantry brigade, and a big one, set up in line behind these hedgerows. Uh, we have two more infantry brigades coming up in support in case we need them. Uh, but really, I'm expecting to stop a lot of this with cavalry. So, uh, all right, we have uh, 214,000 points, closing in on a quarter of a million points. Um, uh, we've inflicted about 12,000 casualties, taken about 3,000 casualties. So... Uh, We've definitely inflict done way, inflicted way more harm on the French than they've inflicted on us. Uh, and that's, that's just done down to some of the defensive tactics I used. Pulling ourselves away from the Grand Battery at the beginning really helped because um, they, they weren't really able to inflict a lot of casualties. The Grand Battery alone is usually good for like 5,000, 6,000 casualties on its own. You know, just if you leave your troops up there on top of that ridge, they will really put a, a hurting on you over the course of uh, over the course of the battle. So we saved ourselves a lot of casualties, but just just by not staying there and pulling ourselves behind the ridge and saying, "Nah, you can't shoot us." 
So, uh, still no Grushy. Again, I don't know exactly when he's going to come. Uh, it's just that, you know, from past experience of having played the scenario, usually it's around now. So yeah, I'm basically just waiting to see if I see some little French blue icons start moving down that road. So, uh, alright, here comes uh, another uh, another big brigade and, uh, uh, and some artillery. And we've got our advanced cavalry squads out there. Just peering down that road. And uh, still quiet. Here we are back at Hukamon. Still shooting at the cavalry out there. But uh, not too much going on. As you can see, we have a ton of cavalry uh, in reserve back here. Uh, not all of it is great quality cavalry, especially back here. But, uh, you know, it is cavalry nonetheless if we need it. Here we have Lambert's 10th Brigade again. I don't know why I keep clicking on them. It looks like I'm moving them over to be like a, a super reserve reserve. Maybe shift them wherever I might need them. They are British troops, it looks like, so they're probably pretty good. Pretty decent. Oh! Oh! We have some French... We have Marshal uh, Pierre Billard there, who, if memory serves, is part of La Folle's division of Van Damme's corps. Uh, so, we at least know we're probably tangling with La Folle's division uh, in the lead here, if Billard's brigade is uh, in front. Uh, who's the other brigade? Corson? Is that the other brigade? I think Corson's brigade and uh, Ballard's brigade make up LaFolle's division of Van Damme's corps. I'm just trying, I'm just going by the, uh, by memory of the Ligny order of battle. Uh, so, uh, alright. So let's pull some of this infantry back to advance the guns. So it does appear we've gotten the Grushy variant, and Grushy is coming. So, uh, okay, we certainly know what we're going to do with the Prussians now. And uh, in the meantime, uh, as Grushy advances, we're going to slow them up with our cavalry. So uh, let's go and see what we can see out here so far. So, all right. We definitely have a brigade of infantry. I see a squadron of cavalry, or a couple of squadrons of cavalry. I see an artillery gun, so that probably means there's a battery here. And we got at least five infantry battalions, so that is definitely Ballard, who is the bigger of the two brigades uh, of Lothol's division. Alright, so now that I know Grushy's coming, we can uh, make some of our uh, 
final adjustments in the, in the line as far as we're going we're gonna to deploy our guns and so forth. And still got more infantry moving into position, but my cavalry will hold them for at least the time being. Uh, while I uh, while I tweak the setup a little bit, and we'll see if we can use our cavalry to make the make Rushi kind of fan out fan out to the north, kind of this way where the bulk of our line is, which is, appears to be what they're doing, uh, fanning out on the north side of the road. So they're definitely moving forward with some cavalry uh, as well as some infantry. So uh, this, these, the cavalry on this side will probably go towards stopping the infantry and forming them into square, uh, while the cavalry over here will probably go to deal with the French cavalry. But uh, I'm also not one to just start completely... Uh, committing all my forces right away. Let's see how this develops first. Let's see what the French do. Uh, most importantly, keep an eye on everything, because right now would be a perfect time for Napoleon to try something sneaky while my attention is off dealing with Grouchy for the moment. So uh, we can use the, the big mini-map there, and as you can see, it looks like uh, just a whole bunch of French troops arriving here. So this is definitely at least all of the Foles division uh, with... Uh, Ballard in front and, and, and Corson in rear with some artillery uh, as well as uh, some cavalry. Probably, uh, this is probably Pajol as he was kind of the most westward cavalry unit uh, in the Wavre scenario. Uh, so I'm guessing this is probably his, uh, his cavalry. And uh, in addition to the cavalry we have out here, we can move some of these troops out into square. Uh, uh, to support them uh, against the cavalry. So if our cavalry, which is not a substantial force, it's only two brigades, uh, is forced to fall back, they can fall back behind these squares and, and the French cavalry will not be able to pursue them. Uh, and we'll also bring up some guns in support. So all right, the French have halted momentarily here and deploying into line uh, as they see our cavalry in front of them. And uh, we've got uh, some more uh, some more infantry moving up over here. I think these are like Germans or something. And uh, we also uh, have uh, Lambert's 10th Brigade out here. And it looks like I'm going to send this cavalry out on the left. Just because I'm a little weak on cavalry, and the French appear to have a lot of it. So, uh, okay, the French are still coming forward. My cavalry is not scaring them. Uh, and uh, currently my units are under AI control. So uh, these units here are moving forward on their own. And uh, we're just going to, like I said, we're just trying to st stall them out here. And uh, there's definitely a lot of forces here. This is at least a whole division in here, so there's probably more. Van Damme's core was pretty big, so I don't know if we're tangling with his whole core. But uh, I suspect it will reveal itself soon enough. So, uh, all right, our cavalry is running off some skirmishers now. These infantry units are going to have to form square. Um, there you go, boys. That's what you want to do. All right, so by, by having them form square like this, we've really stopped up the advance on our left flank uh, temporarily. After all, it's the objectives we want to keep them away from. Uh, and also, uh, we're still setting up our line here. We're not quite ready to uh, engage the French. So we just want to keep them out there. 
for a little while. Like I said, I have, uh, I have an advanced cavalry brigade out there kind of doing their own thing to stop up the French. So I'm not really watching them. I'm just kind of letting the AI handle it while I finish setting, uh, setting this up back here. Now, if the French actually come within range of the troops I'm setting up back here, uh, then I'll begin micromanaging it and actually controlling all the troops on that part of the line. Um, but for right now, I've just got one cavalry brigade uh, engaged with the French there, and their job is just to kind of stop them up and form them into square. And, uh, you know, I'll let the AI handle that, no problem, um, while I finish setting things up back here. So, uh, okay. They're doing an okay job. They're kind of moving forward, and there's not too much cavalry can do once they form infantry into square. Uh, you know, they can only will pretty much get shot at, but the main point of this is, is that they're actually doing that, that they're stopping the French and making them form square and, and giving me time uh, to bring more troops up uh, to, to support them. Uh, I, I also have the Prussians to look forward to, and they should be showing up any minute. Uh, and then, then, then we can just send the whole Prussian corps at them, and uh, let them tangle with that. Alrighty. Oh, all right. We got a message here. My lord, Blucher's forces have arrived from the east. Let us use them to crush the enemy right. We could use the town of Plassenois to serve as a base for our attacks. Uh, all right, so uh, that's one of my staff officers reporting that Blucher's Prussian forces have arrived from the east part of the field. Uh, and uh, But we're not going to attack Plassenois with them because we've gotten the Grouchy variant. Grouchy's up here being a pain in the butt. Uh, so the French are going to get to hold on to Plassenois, which we really don't need it for, uh, as far as points go anyway. We, you know, like I said, we're approaching a quarter of a million points, way more than what we need for a major victory. Uh, so we're just going to hurl, um, we're just going to hurl, uh, the Prussian forces at, uh, at, um, Grouchy and watch the carnage unfold. Uh, now there's nothing really critical about the fight between the Prussians and Grouchy. Um, there's no objectives. There's uh, there's no critical point that needs to be taken. The only thing the Prussians really need to do is just keep Grouchy busy. Uh, so it's not an attack I need to micromanage. It's not an attack I really need to even control at all because it doesn't matter whether it goes well for me or it doesn't go well for me. No amount of points that the Prussians are going to gain or lose for me um, are going to have any effect on a quarter of a million points. It's just, they could go up 10,000 points. They could go down 10,000 points. It doesn't matter. It's, it's not going to affect anything that's, we're still going to be gaining points because of all the objectives that we're holding. You know, the Prussians are not going to duck off the same amount of points per minute that I'm gaining from holding all the objectives I have. So we're still going to be gaining points regardless of how the Prussians do. So I don't really care how the Prussians do. The only thing I do care about is that they actually engage Grouchy and keep him busy and keep him from really impacting this part of the line. Um... And so I'm pretty much just going to put the Prussian forces all under AI control. Uh, we'll put the core commander on all-out attack and uh, just send him at, at Grouchy's forces. Um, his sub his sub commanders, his division commanders, his brigade commanders will probably modify those stances to something more reasonable. And you'll see division commanders put brigades on attack or on defend or probe or whatever stance uh, the uh, the AI sees fit to use uh, in accomplishing my overall order, which is just go get Grushy and we'll let the AI figure out on how best to do that. So, uh, all right, let's roll this forward once again. Alrighty, so uh, if we open the map here now, we can see we have a big Prussian force not too far away. So uh, here they all are, and they just kind of appear on the map. 
Uh, no, we are still on, uh, we are still on, uh, the Wellington part of the map here. So, uh, yeah, no, let's go click on, and there appear to be some French guns out there, too. I don't know how the heck they got out there. So, uh, we'll just find our first... A commander. Here's a cavalry commander, and we can just scroll up. All right, so here's Bulo. He's got 33,000 men. We're gonna take everybody off of uh, everybody off of um, a uh, uh, off take charge. Put them under AI control, and uh, just have them start moving at uh, towards towards the uh, the French. So, uh, you know, it occurs to me that I, I took, uh, I took, I took, uh, Bulo off of Take Charge and then put him right back on Take Charge. So, I'm not, uh, being that I don't want to control this attack at all, I should probably leave everybody under AI control. So, uh, okay, so my attack orders have transferred over to some of the Brigade Commanders. Uh, we've only got about half the core moving forward, though, on the command map, so this is not in real time. These are command orders, so, uh... They may not have all responded to my attack. There we go. That's looking better. So, uh, as you can see, my cavalry has stopped up the French quite well. Uh, they are all mostly in square and just kind of staying that. I'm sure my cavalry is taking some losses as a result of that, but um, the more important thing is that they've stopped the French advance. And, yeah, somehow there's a French battery out here. So here are all the Prussians. Where is this French battery? Oh, there they are. They're kind of at the edge of the map there. I don't know how the heck a French gun battery got all the way out there, but it appears my guns are all deploying to bombard them, but I really don't want that. I'm not interested in fighting a single French gun battery here. Uh, you know, I, I want the Prussians to move on, uh, on Grushi here. So as the French frontline units form square, their rear units are attempting to move forward to kind of slowly advance their line and force my cavalry back. Um, my guns have now all unlimbered. So uh, we're still gaining points. There are 224,000 points. We still hold all the all the major objectives that we need to hold, mostly the Allied right and the Allied left. They're the big money objectives. But also Hugo Mann and Papalot, we also hold those as well. So interesting, interestingly enough, Bulow's corps in this scenario is actually considered part of Wellington's chain of command in that there's no army commander above Bulow uh, that's Blucher. If you go up to army command using the order of battle, you're going to go to Wellington. So Bulow's corps in this scenario is actually considered part of Wellington's army in that he's in, kind of inserted directly into that chain of command as another corps under Wellington's command. And uh, Blucher, I don't even think, appears uh, on the, uh, uh, in this scenario. So 
So as you can see, the Prussians are inch, inching their way kind of northwesterly. They're going to cross this river here and uh, hopefully hit the French uh, right in their side. And uh, all we really have to do is temporarily hold them off uh, until the Prussians get here, which shouldn't be too hard. Uh, we're doing a good job of delaying them just with our cavalry at the moment and uh, you know, stopping them up in square. So as you can see, the, their frontline troops are all kind of stuck in square. And, I, you know, I'm sure my cavalry is just getting peened on by these troops. But, uh, you know, they're full back here and there. Uh, you know, I'm not controlling them. The AI is. So uh, the AI is a little a little more cavalier when it comes to taking casualties uh, than I am. Uh, meaning they will lose more men for no reason than I will. Uh, but... Uh, you know, in the interest of just not having to bother controlling all of this myself, and the fact that, uh, you know, what little casualties my cavalry will take really has no bearing on anything, considering the amount of points per minute we're getting with the objectives we have, then it's just like, it's just one less thing for me to worry about. They'll do their job, they'll go forward, they'll stop units. As they back up, some, some of these units will form line and start to move forward again. And, you know, my cavalry will go forward and kind of stop them again. Uh, notice that all their cavalry that they had advancing on their right has pulled back. So they've only got infantry out there now. Uh, and their gun line is also pretty far back. Here's their infantry, and then their cavalry has all pulled back here. Uh, it could be that they detect the Prussians coming. And that they can see some of those troops and are unwilling to commit more troops to my lines which is just fine by me, which is almost exactly what I want. Uh, you know, by all means, you know, pull back and deal with the Prussians. Uh, because the main thing is that we hold our line here uh, and continue holding on to these objectives that are coughing up all these points for us. So, uh, yeah, we're still going up. We're at 226,000 points. So, yeah, like I said, even th even though we're going to be taking some more casualties now, it's just nothing in comparison to the amount of points we're getting from these objectives. You know, I think, let's, th all right, so we got two objectives that are worth 200 points a minute, so that's 400 points a minute. And then the other two objectives are worth 100 points a minute, so that's 200 points a minute total. So we're getting a total of 600 points a minute. Uh, and as you can see, the Prussian forces are just moving on in. And it is, uh, yeah, it is, it is Bulow's entire core here. A huge force, 31,000 men. Uh, and we are just going to slam them headfirst into Grushi's forces and, uh, you know, watch the carnage unfold here. Uh, and this is just some of the towns kind of to the south of the Prussian position. And uh, I just want to take a look at Plassenois here, because if I see the French objective occupied, I'm going to take that as evidence that the 6th Corps, Lobau's Corps, has moved to occupy that position. And means I don't have to worry about them. Yep, and sure enough, here's the objective at Plassenois. It is indeed occupied by the French, so I'm going to take that as evidence that Lobau's Corps is at Plassenois and will not be a factor in the battle since we are not attacking Plassenois. Because I'm going to assume since it's a victory location that the, scenario, the script scenario calls for Lobau's Corps to move there and stay there, whether the Prussians engage them or not. So, uh, once again, the French are starting to push forward, but when they come to within range of this cavalry, uh, you know, we can charge, we, we can either charge them or they have to form square and, uh, stop moving forward. So, uh, okay, there you go, form square, boys. And we'll just pull right back, put you under AI control. And you see, my cavalry will pull back when they start being fired upon. There they go. Uh, but, you know, it's forcing these French squares to basically 
kind of slowly hopscotch forward. You know, they can't just walk forward. Uh, you know, this little two brigades of cavalry that I have out front have really slowed the French advance down. And uh, you can see Lambert's 10th Brigade moving into position now. So I've got plenty of troops over here now. And, you know, the French are still nowhere near my lines. And I've got my guns blazing. I've got cavalry. I've got infantry squares. And, uh, you know, this part of the line has not been pressed, so, uh, you know, those troops are still in really good shape. So I was able to strip a lot of my reserves, and I'm still confident if that position were attacked, it would hold. And I really didn't strip too many forces from my right center, where uh, the troop quality isn't quite as high. So, uh, all right, almost 230,000 points. So, uh, a couple of lingering squadrons from Milhouse Cavalry out here, and our squares are just tossing them up. They'll come forward, we'll shoot at them, they'll run away. Sooner or later they'll all run away after, they, after they've eaten enough lead. And, uh... I'm just going to run to the fridge real quick, guys, because I certainly don't want to have to make a fridge run in the middle of the Prussian Grushi fight. So uh, I'm going to do it before they actually reach Grushi. I'll be right back. Alrighty guys, I am back, and as you can see, the Prussians have crossed the river in force. We've got infantry, cavalry, artillery. So just uh, tons of Prussian forces, and uh, alright, you can see the French are turning to meet them. And it looks like a vastly inferior force compared to what we're bringing forward. Uh, however, we've got at least the large whole brigade locked down in squares over here, so... Uh, some of them are turning back, but others are just stuck in square right now and being bombarded by our artillery and held in place by our cavalry. So we have some of the French forces separated. Uh, so it looks like, uh, it looks like uh, Boulot will have the advantage of them if we can contain these forces over here. And uh, all the while, I'm just making sure Napoleon isn't going to try something sneaky while I'm uh, watching uh, what's going on with Boulot and Grouchy. I mean, I'm ready for anything. Uh, you know, the French are certainly not going to be able to make a major assault without me seeing it, and I'm pretty well prepared for anything across my line here. So uh, some of Milhouse Cavalry is trying to move forward again, but, you know, they're not going to make any progress against these squares. Looks like the square is still getting picked apart a little bit. Uh, the ridge just must not be that shallow, uh, you know, or, or, or that uh, steep on the side of it, and uh, I'm going to have to keep pulling, pulling them back a little bit.
pull some of this cavalry back, then we can pull the infantry line back, pull the guns back, and pull the squares back a little bit more. You know, I'd love to put some artillery on the ridge to shoot back against these guns, these French guns, but, uh, you know, there's still too many French cavalry squadrons close that I want to expose my guns. So, uh, all right, Boulot's corps is pretty much engaged now with the Prussian, with the, uh, with Grouchy. And, oh my. So, uh, yeah, the, the carnage is about to unfold here. We can see some of the Prussian cavalry moving into the woods, forcing some of the French units into square. We still got a lot more coming up. So we've already got 110 points. We're pretty even on casualties. We've taken a few more than we've uh, inflicted, but uh, I'm confident as soon as uh, uh, you know our troops come up and start getting into position that we'll do a little better. And uh, I've now uh, taken Bulo off take charge himself and putting him on all-out attack, so I'm going to let the AI control everything going on over here, even at the core level. So, core, division, brigade, all the troops here are under AI control. So we've got the French kind of divided up into two forces. The forces that advance out to meet us early on are now kind of pinned up in square and stuck out here, while the remainder of their forces now have to deal with the Prussians moving in from the south on, on them. Uh, I can hear some canister going off. That's uh, probably either the Prussians or, or Grouchy's. I don't think my cannon are close enough. So, uh, alrighty, the fight is on. So, 233,000 points, still gaining points. And as you can see, just the front line of the Prussians have started to engage. Uh, we have a better idea now of the size back here. It may be a little more even than I thought it was. At first, I thought we really outnumbered the French, but it's probably Van Damme's entire corps, so it's probably a little more even than uh, than I at first thought. But uh, I think we have more than enough troops back here to, to secure our left flank at this point. And this is probably all we're going to have to deal with, because... The, the, the rest of the French have their hands full back here, I assure you, dealing with, uh, with, uh, Bulow's troops. So, uh, again, here's Placenois, still occupied. That pretty much, you know, that seals the deal. I'm going to say Lobau's core is down here, and they're probably going to stay here. So that uh, that leaves the Prussians uh, free to uh, to go ham on these French over here. So some of the Prussian cannon have deployed got more troops crossing got a little artillery duel going on over here and uh, it looks like the bulk of the fighting is starting to happen inside these woods here I see a lot of our infantry moving forward in that direction and as you can see right off the bat what a mess This is just pure chaos going on in here. Uh, as I said, the 
the AI's tactics tend to be a bit messy compared to mine. This is, you know, certainly not how I would have carried out the attack, but um, at the same time, against the AI, you know, my attacks aren't often that exciting to watch because they're just they're carried out with tactics that are so overwhelming and alien to the AI that it usually just should, it's usually over before it's begun the way I, I use attacks so watching the AI kind of fight itself like this messy and chaotic though it may be it's pretty exciting to watch We've still got some French guns at the the very kind of eastern end of the map here I have no idea how the hell they got out here uh, but uh, they are points, and sooner or later we'll grab some cavalry and just capture them. But uh, right now, let's uh, let's let uh, Bulow keep carrying out his attack here, and uh, he's doing good. He's got almost 400 points. He's uh, inflicted 632 casualties, and he's taken 375. Uh, so he's not doing bad. And again, I'm just using my cavalry out here just to keep them stopped up out there. My artillery is bombarding them. Uh, all we have to do is uh, keep our guns and ammo here, and they can continue to bombard these squares, which, uh, even though we're not in canister range, that'll do damage over time. And, uh, yeah, see, this is what I was looking for. Is Napoleon was going to try and do something sneaky here. So... Part of uh, Bruce's brigade has looked like it started to move within engaged distance again and are shooting at my skirmishers. See if any troops are going to move out from the Lahai San area and try and attack. Just, you know, classic AI strategy of trying to start an attack somewhere else while my attention is, you know, over here. But that's why we have this map. So we, I can see everything going on you know, kind of everywhere on the field. Uh, and if I see any major movements, I can go and deal with it. But, uh, no, let's just uh, continue to watch the Prussians here and uh, see how they're, again, just more troops continuing to file across the river. Tons of infantry. Uh, we've got a lot of these French troops formed up in square. So, uh, by our, our leading cavalry here. And our infantry is beginning to move in. Now, they're not all going to move in at once because I only put the Corps Commander on all-out attack. The Corps Commander will tell his Division Commanders what he wants done, and then the Division Commanders will assign their orders to the Brigade Commanders based on what they think is the best way to carry out what the Corps Commander wants. So not everybody is going to be put on all-out attack. A lot of the Division Commanders will put, you know, a Brigade on attack and then a Brigade in reserve. Um, you know, and, and some... Some brigades will have attack stances, some will have defense stances, some will have probe stances. It really depends on uh, how the AI wants to go about carrying out uh, its, its attack. So it's not just going to throw all its troops uh, at Grushi all at once and, and blow itself out. It will, it will throw a, a, a decent attack at them and keep some troops in reserve for later on. So we're almost at 240,000 points here. Like I said, closing in on a quarter of a million points. Marcog may still be nice and quiet out there. And you know what? Just stay there, nice and quiet. And I'm just going to fill in this little skirmisher group gap right here. The French are still kind of posted outside on either side of La High Sant with some infantry. A couple of minor cavalry squadrons uh, left from the cavalry attack, still milling about out here. They kind of move forward, they get shot at, they turn around. And I think we are now safely behind the ridge at this point.
and some of these guns are falling silent, probably because they're out of ammo. So we just want to do quick ammo runs, make sure all our guns are still shooting. So, uh, our skirmishers are holding their own at Papalot here. We can bring our supply wagon back out of the range of fire here. Most of these skirmish units are pretty well, pretty well ammoed now. leave those boys with a fresh skirmisher unit. And, uh, alright, we've still got a lot of this French infantry of the Lard's Brigade kind of holed up out here. And, uh, we're bombarding them with our guns, and, uh, our guns are doing good. We've already got 123 points, 170 points. Uh, these guys have inflicted 154 casualties. I can't go by their points because he, he was holding an objective for quite a while, so he's got 57,000 points. So, uh, all right, the Prussians have uh, moved into the woods here. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, we have some of the infantry staying in reserve and some of it moving forward. And the AI will decide when and where and how to commit its reserves uh, if it feels it needs it. So uh, how is Boulot doing here? He's doing excellent. He's got 1,300 points. He's inflicted over 1,000 casualties. He's uh, taken almost 500 casualties. So uh, his attack is going well here so far. Messy though it may be. So it appears at least most of our forces have crossed the river now. And uh, we've got some of our cavalry keeping the French in square. Some of their cavalry is keeping us in square. Uh, so we, you can see some of the French reserves back here. So, uh, oh no, we still have a lot more to cross the river. My god, is this core huge. So, alright, we're going to relieve this tired skirmisher unit and bring them back over. We'll just recall them. And we'll kick out another one to take up the old position. in the hedgerows there, on the flank of Papalot. So uh, we now have a fresh skirmisher unit uh, on the front. But it appears Pagos or Bruce or whoever it was, it appears their units have fallen back yet again. <coughs> and uh, we have some more reserve Prussian units formed up in the woods, kind of west of Papalot. And uh, Ballard's brigade is just tied up back here. Some of their rear units could begin moving off, but they're just staying there. And our artillery is continuing to deck them. So, uh, oh my, we have a Prussian squadron here that is just going buck wild. Where are you boys going? How did you get all the way up there? Look at this. Bunch of heroes. Oh, they're chasing after some French guns. I think you boys have uh, gone and overdone it a little bit. You might want to get out of there. Yeah, for the for their own sake. Well, yeah, sheesh. Look at me. Just like, let me see if I can get these guns. I don't know. I don't think these guys are going to charge, though. I think they're tired. I don't think that's going to work. 
Oh, I'm so greedy for guns, though. Oh, yeah, it's not gonna work. Get out of there. Plus, they've got three French squadrons on their tail. They're kind of cut off from their own forces. Oh, well, there's always heroes in every battle. So, uh, the Prussians are really starting to push into these woods now. You can see, uh, we've definitely gained a strong foothold in them. Got skirmishers out front, lots of skirmishers, cavalry, infantry moving in. We've got artillery kind of scattered all over the place. We've got more cavalry uh, in reserve back here, a lot of cavalry. That force is probably being held uh, in reserve uh, for the coup de grace. And we're just holding Ballard in check over here with all our forces. Like I said, I'm not really interested in engaging them. Uh, you know, I just kind of want to hold my objectives and, and gain my points. They're just, this this just here to be a wall. And uh, you can see we're far ahead of the objective, so we're in a real good position to uh, stop those elements, those forward elements of Grouchy's forces from getting anywhere near that allied left objective, which is one of our critical objectives. It's one of the 200 points per minute objectives. So, uh, yeah, okay, everybody's resting. So, uh, all right, we're at uh, 243,000 points, and uh, somehow we have a Prussian regimental commander running around behind our lines. I think you should be with your regiment, sir, and not with Wellington. I have no idea how you got so separated from your regiment, but uh, I don't know, maybe he was making a report to Wellington, letting him know what was going on. So, uh, all right, the Prussian attack is continuing. More forces moving up. More forces moving into the woods here. And uh, I think I've got a pretty good... I think I've got a pretty good grasp of the scope of the forces that we're facing here. And I do think the Prussians outnumber them. Now, you may see a lot of troops just kind of back here, uh, stand, standing here doing nothing uh, and, and not engaging. But as I said, the AI will not throw all its forces at the enemy all at once. It's going to hold some forces in reserves to continue the attack later when these tr frontline troops get blown out or tired or forced to retreat or routed. Uh, so the AI will not just leave itself with no troops to work with. Uh, however, it's doing great. Uh, Below is at almost 2,000 points. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's doing good. Yeah, it, it, an interesting facet of this battle is that there's actually two Wellington sprites. There's one who is the army commander and then another who is the third corps commander. Uh, because I think there was a corps in the army that was directly under Wellington's command. And he was also the army commander. So, uh, I think the game kind of simulates that by having two Wellington sprites, one who's the army commander and one who is the corps commander, um, just to kind of not, just to keep the order of battle, I guess, in a way that makes sense for the AI. Obviously, it's silly having two Wellington sprites, but I guess the game can't have an army commander be that and a corps commander at the same time without having two separate officers to represent that. So yes, we do indeed have two Wellingtons uh, on the field. Our one is the army commander and one is the third corps commander. So this unit is engaged at like very maximum range, 149 yards. So they're like engaged without doing anything because they're at like literally like the maximum range for the musket. So they're really just fatiguing themselves and, and not hitting anything because it's like so maximum range. Uh, so I should probably pull them back a yard or two just to get them out of musket range. So here comes our uh, Prussian regimental commander who's making his way back to his troops. You can see him moving there. 
I don't know how the heck he got all the way out here, but uh, we have our uh, Albert Lieutenant Frederick von Specht of the Linian Infantry Brigade, uh, and those are our troops on the left in the black uniforms. And uh, I'm always just keeping an eye on the French too, because uh, you know, as I said now would be the time to do something surprising while I'm not paying attention so of course I'm going to pay attention so I will just keep kind of scouting up and down the lines and making sure the French aren't trying to do anything sneaky um, I have the whole Prussian force uh, being controlled by the AI anyway and I'm not really looking to interfere in it too much uh, you know generally speaking if you're gonna let the AI carry out an attack uh, it's best to just let the AI carry out its attack. If you start grabbing its units and making changes, you're just going to mess up its attack plan. Uh, if you're going to do that, you got to take charge of the units and actually remove them from the chain of command. But if you start like trying to like click on units without like taking charge of them and directing them what to, to do things within the AI framework, you're just going to mess up the AI's attack plan. It's got a plan uh, of what it is it wants to do. And if you're going to let, like, an entire core, like I'm doing, carry out an attack on its own, then it's really best to just let them do it and not interfere. Because you're just going to muck everything up if you do. You know, the only way to to, um, to, to micromanage units within an AI attack is to actually grab them and take command of them. Because then that will remove... That won't really muck up the AI's attack plan because you're just making the units basically disappear from its from its chain of command uh, which is not the same thing as just grabbing a unit that it has control of and moving them without taking command of it that's how you muck up the AI's attack plan by trying to make them do things uh, while this while the units are still under AI control if you're gonna leave the units under AI control then just let them do their thing Especially in, like, the opening moments of an engagement like this. Like, I know it's tempting when you see, you know, whole brigades and uh, uh, just sitting out there not doing anything in, in the rear. You know, but the, the air has a reason for doing that. You know, it's keeping units in reserve because it's, it's not going to throw its whole force, everything it's got, into one attack. It's just not the way the AI works. Um, it's going to hold units in reserve because its frontline units will eventually get tired, they'll get, uh, their morale will be shot, their fatigue will be shot, and they'll be forced to withdraw or fall back or rout, and the AI wants to have reserve units to move forward when, the, when that happens. So, it's best to just let the AI, ca I know this looks like a mess, I know this looks like total frickin' chaos, you know, and it is, that's one of my problems with the AI's tactics. Um, and, and why I developed my own tactics uh, that are obviously a lot cleaner and more organized than what the AI does. Um, but this would be, if I were going to micromanage this attack, this would be like a full-time job for me. You know, this would be a lot for me to keep my eyes on. There's no way I could micromanage this attack and still watch what's going on uh, uh, throughout Wellington's lines. You know, I'd have to pretty much focus all my attention on this. And uh, the fact of the matter is, this is just isn't that critical. The only real thing I want to happen here is exactly what is happening. The Prussians are tying up Grouchy. They're not letting Grouchy be a factor in engaging my lines over on the, on the ridge. And that's really all I care about happening. The fact that Boulot is doing good and that he's up 2,000 points, uh, great. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, that, that's fine, but it's, it, it really wouldn't matter whether he was up 2,000 or down 2,000. Really what I wanted is that he just, uh, he just engage the, uh, the French troops. So, all right, these, these French guns here have no business being in our rear like this. So uh, I am going to grab, this is, just, this, is, this is just from a reserve unit here, uh, and I've taken notice, I've taken command of one squadron. Uh, these other brigades may be getting ready to move out, but they'll just continue to move out and follow the AI's orders. Uh, 
and I've taken my one squadron and I put them under take charge, so they're just not a factor right now. And I'm going to use them to capture these French guns, and then afterwards I'll return them to the AI's control and let them do what they want with it. Um, but like I said, this is from a reserve unit. It's not critical to what's going on up here, uh, so I'm not really mucking up the AI's attack plan, which is looks like it's working out well. It looks like we've um, almost totally pushed the French out of the woods at this point. And it definitely looks like we substantially outnumber the French forces. And the Prussian numbers are now starting to tell. But uh, I have no idea how this French battery got out here, but uh, I have no tolerance for that. And we're going to use a cavalry squadron to uh, see if we can capture those guns. Oh, look, a poor dead... Is a French officer or a Prussian officer? I guess there's no way to tell. So it looks like the AI is starting to call up some of its cavalry reserves. Probably it senses that the French are breaking, and it wants to have some cavalry on hand. You can see we've really started to push them back north of the road here. A couple of routed French units routing off the field. It looks like we're starting to encircle them a little bit over here. Still got some of their units bottled up over here. And we're just going to try and see if we can slowly sneak the squadron up uh, and take some guns. So yeah, it looks like the AI is definitely calling up some of its artillery reserves. Set up a lot of guns over here. A lot of guns over here. And uh, we've still got, still got Ballard's Brigade pretty well bottled up out here. They're not really making any movement. Uh, they're not shooting at our cavalry. They're just kind of sitting there letting an artillery bomb away on them. And they've got no artillery out here of their own. So, all right, we've got our 142-man squadron. Not the greatest quality troops here. They're level 4 volunteer, but uh, we really only need them to do this one thing. As you can see, we've really pushed into these woods. Go, Bulo. So it looks like uh, our Prussian Corps is really handing Van Damme its tail here. Uh, continuing to push into the woods here. The French definitely look like they're giving ground. Doesn't look like they have much in the way of reserves. They got one, I see one cavalry brigade out there. Well, now Ballard's Brigade is starting to show some signs of life. And, yeah, this is just me scrolling the lines here, making sure nobody's doing anything crazy. All right, let's see if we can... We should be close enough to start thinking about capturing these guns. Charge, boys. Machinelle. And some of the French guns are uh, attempting to move off. However, this is the edge of the map right here. I don't know if they can actually run off the edge of the map. If they can't, they're just going to stop. And we're going to be able to gobble them up. So, uh, all right. Here is our first gun here. And they're just lined up like a nice little smorgasbord for us. So we still got pretty good energy because we walked most of the way. So uh, now we can uh, charge and charge and charge. So I'm just uh, mashing away on this charge button here just to continue the charge over and over again. And uh, keep them going. See if we can just wrap up these guns. So they're, uh, they're starting to hook up here, but uh, like I said, the edge of the map is like right over here somewhere. So I don't even know where they think they can go. I think this is the edge, because you see this road just end right here. So uh, they're slowly starting to move off here, and we are about to pierce into their lines. 
and just start making them surrender left and right. These guys are next. Uh, looks like we're heading for some of these uh, middle units now. Get these guys in here. Bam. Get these guys. These guys. And we're racking up just points. Every one of these is 30 points, so we're up to 220, 250 points now. This should bring us to 280, and that's the last gun. And there's just nowhere for them to go. And we killed the officer. So, all right, I've taken that unit off of take charge now and returned it to AI control. And uh, we've got ourselves a lot of guns. And uh, we're back at my lines here in front of Grushi's forces, and we're just keeping our guns firing. Uh, they're really doing good. 200 casualties, 200 casualties. So uh, they're just ripping up uh, the large forces out here, especially these squares. You can see the bodies in the squares. So let's go see what the carnage is looking like on the uh, the Prussian front here. What a mess. Uh, to be honest, at this point, I wouldn't even want to get involved and try to micromanage this. Just This would be like untangling, like, just a ball of knotted yarn. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I have no intention of getting involved here. I'm just kind of uh, watching the chaos. <coughs> but I can definitely see that the, the French forces are falling back. They don't appear to have anywhere near the reserves that we do. Uh, you can see we're really gobbling them up. And we're still, we're pressing forward while they're backing up. So we have some crazy forest wood spiting going on in here. We have some French cavalry massed on their left, but we're all formed in square over here. And uh, a lot of skirmishers on the field. Much more skirmishers than I'm accustomed to seeing uh, the AI deploy. It's definitely using a lot of them. It isn't using them the way I used them, uh, but it's using them nonetheless. So I'm just giving you some good close-up views of the, uh, the chaos and the carnage going on here as the Prussians continue to push into these woods. Uh, some of the French cavalry has formed, uh, stopped us and formed us in the square, but, you know, we're shooting at them. And uh, we are at... Boulot's doing amazing. I mean, he's he's at 3,000 points. He's inflicted 2,700 casualties and taken 1,000 casualties uh, of his own. So, I can't, I, it's caught crazy and it's messy and it's chaotic, but it's getting the job done. And uh, we have now crossed a quarter of a million points. So... Uh, at this point, we have a 150,000 point lead. It would be nearly impossible to duck off that amount of points. Like, I would have to make the most catastrophic of blunders. And even then, I, I doubt it would cost us 150,000 points. And, uh, yeah, things are looking pretty quiet over here. You know, I don't think the French really have too many more forces they could send at us. We know Lobau's corps is at uh, Plassenois. So, really, the only uncommitted troops that he's the, Napoleon has are, um, I guess, Bachelot's division of Ryle's corps. Kellerman's Cavalry and uh, the Imperial Guard. I really think that's about it. I think he's already thrown the rest of his forces at us and Lobau Six Corps we know is at Plassenois because we can see that the objective is occupied. Which um, 
I'm not sure it's really fair that I'm able to see that. I have no troops in range to be able to see Placenois, but I can see that the objective is occupied. And that's giving me that's giving me intelligence I don't think I really should have. Because by seeing that objective occupied, what is that? It tells me that there's French troops over there. You know, I know that there's French troops over there. And since the, since the AI doesn't generally just send, you know, like a battalion and one officer to occupy an objective, it's pretty safe for me to assume that there is, in fact, you know, a substantial force at Placenois. And given so far that Napoleon's forces so far have pretty much followed the historical attack plan, uh, apart from, you know, Grouchy showing up, uh, it's safe to say that it's probably Lobau's entire core at Placidois. So, uh, all right. Finally, some of the rear elements of Billard's brigade are starting to move rearward. And that's probably because some of these Prussian forces are coming close to them now. We can see we have some Prussian cavalry, some Prussian artillery nearby. Uh, and so they're probably starting to get infiladed. So our guns are continuing to uh, pour fire into these troops and gaining points. Just got to keep uh, keep the supply wagon runs going and keep them uh, keep them going. They're all, all our guns are. You know, I just I just kind of uh, hastily picked these uh, places to place these batteries, but uh, it looks like they were good places to put them because they're continuing to gain points. And see, by, you know, by putting all the Prussian forces under AI control and letting the AI carry out this uh, Prussian attack on Grouchy's forces, I don't got to be there every minute, you know? I don't need to be here at all, I can, if, I want, if I don't want to. You know, I'm, just, I'm going over and checking Wellington's lines and making sure that the French aren't doing anything. And, uh, but mostly what I'm doing here is just watching because I don't really want... Because I gave the AI this attack at the core level and basically the AI has decided how to carry out this attack in its entirety, I don't really want to get involved. I mean, other than this, yeah, okay, I did get involved with this one squadron, which is now back on AI control and is under the, the, uh, the AI's control and is moving it forward. Um, but other than that, I'm not really getting involved. And you can see the Prussians are still continuing to push forward here, starting to wrap around the French left flank, as well as come between... They have a potential to come between the separated French forces there. And, uh, yeah, a lot of times I'll use the mini-map just to see what's going on on the, on, uh, you know, at the big picture. You know, I can see the front cavalry moving about at Hugomont. I can see what's going on over here and just kind of pick where I want. So we are really pushing forward here. You can see that the, the, the French troops are largely out of the woods now. And the, the Prussian troops are moving through it. So look at all these skirmishes. My goodness. I am really not used to seeing the AI use skirmishes like this, and they're they're raping these French lines. So you can see a lot of these forward units now are getting tired, uh, and that's the reason that the AI keeps so many units in reserve, is because as these units get tired, it, the AI can pull them back and send fresh units forward, and it has its own ideas about when and where and how to do that and but you know ooh some french skirmishers here looking to shoot at some uh shoot at some artillery that's a lot of artillery though for one skirmisher unit to handle they might turn back one gun but all that all that canister fire will turn them around so yeah my cavalry has taken some casualties but uh not many, you know, and our guns have put hundreds of casualties on these French out here. These guys have taken a big hit, though. 
Oh, that's the whole brigade, though. So everything's still relatively quiet uh, on my lines. Oh yeah, we want to resupply this battery. It's been shooting for quite a while. And it's been a while since I had the bat the uh, supply wagon over here. I'm kind of using the supply wagon to keep the all three of these units in supply. And uh, got plenty of infantry. I got plenty of defense out here. Uh, so we are uh, still engaged in a little firefight here. And just doing some supply wagon runs to keep all these guns in ammo. And, uh, yeah, this is, you know, I can still keep track of my lines and keep on. This is what's really important is my lines and because this is where all the objectives are. Uh, so, you know, let's not get it twisted in that uh, the Prussian Grushi encounter is not critical to what's going on here. The, the, the real important thing is that I hold these objectives. That's what's giving us all our points. Um, you know, so by having that attack being entirely controlled by the AI, um, you know, I just don't have to watch it that much. You know, most of the reason I'm going over it and watching it is just because there's nothing going on on my lines, and it just gives me something to watch, and gives you guys something to watch. Um, but, you know, I can afford to disappear from that fight anytime I want, and just do supply wagon runs and make sure my lines are secure, and make sure that nobody's threatening uh, any portion of our line, and, and the... Prussian attack will continue without me, as it is doing, and the Prussians are continuing to move forward. And they still have a lot of forces in reserve back here. You know, all these forces back here are not engaged at all. And we're continuing to push the French, and it doesn't look like they have much in reserve. And we have tons of troops in reserve. Look at all these troops that aren't doing anything. Tons of troops in reserve. Look at the square ripping apart this cavalry here. They're doing good. So yeah, a lot of these Prussian units have formed square on their own just in response to uh, the fact that there's French cavalry nearby. And so it formed square, obviously, to protect itself from them. So uh, Baloo is still doing what I would consider pretty good for uh, an AI attack. He's got 3,500 points, he's inflicted 3,300 casualties and taken about 1,200. Uh, you know, so I, I, I can't really complain, you know. They're doing, they're doing well. Like I said, it's it's messy and chaotic, and, and the AI is certainly a lot more cavalier when it comes to taking casualties than I am. I find tactics that generally reduce my casualties as much as possible, while inflicting as many casualties on the enemy as possible. Um, but, you know, a lot of my tactics are gamey and cheap and shouldn't necessarily be taken as something that actually reflects um, how Napoleonic warfare really was. Uh, it's probably closer to what you see going on over with the Prussians and Grushi than it is uh, what you can see me doing. Um, but, uh, you know, I've always said I, I play this like a video game, not like a historical simulation. Uh, so I do, I do and use the most effective tactics that I've discovered in the game, whether they're historically accurate or not. That's not really what concerns me. 
my concern is do the, do, do my strategies and tactics work? And and, and they absolutely do. Um, but like I said, this just isn't critical over here. What's going on to what is there's no objectives over here. There's nothing of any importance. All the objectives that are important are within the allied lines. And this, I'm all. This is all under take take charge. It's just all TC'd and. Uh, I'm controlling and micromanaging every aspect of this. However, I have it set up pretty much the way I want it. There's not too much I need to actually do. Right now, I'm just holding off some scrubby, used-up cavalry uh, that comes forward, gets shot at, and runs away. And really, I'm just, you know, hanging out, waiting to see what the French do next. So, uh, all right, so it's 1800, 6 p.m., uh, and uh, I'm going to make another fridge run. I'll be right back, fellas. Alrighty, and I'm back. And, uh, oh, we can see some Prussian units streaming from the field, and, uh, oh, another a Prussian skirmisher unit surrendered. Uh, but as you can see, they're also starting to call up some of their cavalry reinforcements. We still have some units in reserve. Uh, you know, the AI will not just leave itself defenseless. If some of its forward units start to be knocked back, it will send reinforcements forward to... Uh, to replace them or plug the hole or, or do whatever. So, yes, we have units falling back, but we have many more units in reserve. Um, and uh, the AI is also consider continuing to bring up more cavalry and more artillery. Uh, and so, like I said, I'm really not going to... There's a thousand things I could do to make this situation even better for, for us. Um, if I started getting involved in controlling every aspect of this battle, I could absolutely fix this and make this neater. But th there's really no reason to, um, dis despite the fact that this is messy and chaotic. We're winning. Boulot's winning. He's, you know, nearly 4,000 points ahead. He's pushing the French back out of the woods. Um, you know, and, and none of this is even critical to the battle. Oh, these guys aren't even routed. They're just retreating. Okay. They're not even in that bad of shape. They're doing good. They just need to recover some fatigue. So, uh, anyway, we have entire brigades in reserve here. You know, we haven't, we, we've committed probably about a third of our force. So, while, uh, yeah, so 4,000 points below has, he's, he's inflicted 4,000 casualties, he's taken about 1,200. There's no way you can say he's not doing good. He's absolutely doing good. You know, the only real complaint I've ever had about the AI is it's just messy. It, it's just a little chaotic tactically, at least more so than I am. But, you know, I had to play the game for a long time to come up with the stuff that I've come up with. When I started playing Scourge of War, I really didn't know anything about Napoleonic tactics. I mean, no, that's not true. I, I knew something about it. I knew cavalry was, you know, more important. But really, I'm an American Civil War guy. I, that's where I come from. I've been playing the Scourge of War series basically since Scourge of War Gettysburg came out, like, m many moons ago. I don't even remember how long ago. But, you know, I played all those games. Scourge of War Antietam, Chancellorsville, Pipe Creek, blah, blah, blah. You know, um... So, I, I was always a, a, a Civil War guy. I wasn't really that into Napoleonics. Um, you know, being from the East Coast of, of the United States, uh, when I was a kid, my father took me to all the major Civil War battlefields on the East Coast, you know, Gettysburg, Antietam, uh, Bull Run, Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, the Wilderness, Spotsylvania, I mean, on and on. He took me to all of them, you know. So I've always been very, very into the American Civil War, and that's really what I knew the most about tactically. And I really didn't know that much about Napoleonics, other than, like, the really broad strokes. Like, yeah, I knew, like, infantry could form square, and I knew, like... 
cavalry was more important as actual combat arm on the field uh whereas it was really wasn't uh that way in the american civil war um so when scourge of war waterloo was announced i was actually a little disappointed because i didn't really want to do napoleonics i wanted another american civil war battle uh, you know i thought it was going to be something like shiloh you know or um uh, the wilderness or some other big battle. I thought I, I did not think Scourge of War. It was a total left hook, uh, a total surprise when they announced Scourge of War Waterloo for me uh, three years ago, um, and it was a bit of a letdown for me because I, I it was like a total shift in direction from what I was used to and really what I wanted it to be. I wasn't even expecting uh, a, a shift like that in the Scourge of War series. It had always been. A civil war game, and even its descendants, like take like the Take Command Bull Run and Take Command Second Manassas games, and uh, you know they they had always been civil war games. Um, uh, so I really was not expecting Scourge of War to go in this direction, and the only reason I bought it is it was still a Scourge of War game, and I still Scourge of War was at the at the time and still is um, my favorite war game series of all time. So regardless of the fact that it was in an, uh, a battle I didn't know as much about and a type of warfare I didn't know as much about, I bought it anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, initially when I when I started playing the game, I really wasn't that good at it. Um, I knew the interface and I knew how the game worked in terms of how to move units, how to command units, how to use the AI. I knew all that stuff because it wasn't that different from the Scourge of Wars. Uh, series. So I knew how to get units to move, I know how to order them to attack and use stances, and, and all that stuff was the same uh, as in the Civil War Scourge of War games. Uh, so playing the game was not beyond me, but the tactics I had no idea about. I had no idea how to use cavalry, I had no idea how to use these little dinky skirmisher units. Um, and, you know, and I had really no understanding of combined arms. So at first, I really had no choice but to play and use the AI and really let it carry out attacks because at the time, the AI knew a lot more about using Napoleonic tactics than I did. I didn't really know anything about it. Um, so the way I learned was by watching what the AI did and how it used cavalry, how it used artillery, how it used skirmishers, how it used squares, how it used attack columns. And slowly over time, I started to gain a grasp of how the tactics work. And over a long time, I actually started to um, develop things that the AI didn't do and uh, figure out things that I could do that were um, even beyond the scope of what the AI would do. And eventually, I learned to create tactics that were so much better than anything the AI could do that uh, I, I actually became better at the game than the AI was. Um, so, yeah, that's how I learned, I, you know, I learned how to use skirmishers and, and, and what their, what, what uh, you know, what their use was for, and uh, I learned how to bring artillery to the front, I learned how to defend it using for, uh, formations like the fortress, uh, I learned how to use cavalry, I learned how to do all this stuff that uh, I originally learned from watching the AI do it, and then I just took those things and made them better. And eventually, over a long period of time, I made them impregnable and undefeatable. Uh, and that's where I'm at now, uh, as far as the, the tactics that I use against against the AI. Um, but in a way, my tactics have almost evolved to the point where they're almost too good. Uh, in that a lot of times it ends up just disrupting French attack, you know, I like this situation here, I end up just disrupting attacks before they even really get off the ground. As you saw Durland's core attack, you know, it really didn't amount to much. It didn't amount to much because the defenses that it approached back in rear of the ridge were just so strong and so ridiculous that there really wasn't anything the AI could do against it. Uh, so sometimes... My tactics are so good, it's not even exciting to watch because it's just so far ahead of what the AI does tactically that the AI just doesn't even know what to do against it. Um, and so sometimes it is fun to just go old school like what you see me doing with the Prussians and, and Grushi and just letting the AI at attack. And, and it's, 
it's much more chaotic and it's much more messy than anything I would ever do. But it's a little more exciting to watch and probably a little more realistic in terms of the, the, the chaos of the battlefield. Battlefields were not clean and organized like this. The only reason I can do this is because I can put all these forces on TC and just dash back and forth and, 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 and control every aspect of every unit on the field. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot, like I said, a lot of these formations are set up in ways that you don't even need to watch them all the time, and they'll just kind of hold themselves because of the way they're set up. Um, but, uh, you know, so because this attack with between Grushi and, and the Prussians just wasn't that critical, I thought it would be fun to just kind of let them rip at each other uh, under AI control. I knew it would be crazy and messy and chaotic, but... Uh, you know, because it's not critical to the battle, I just thought it would be fun to watch. And you know what? Look at this. The Prussians are, are really doing well. They're, they're really kicking the bejesus out of the French. They're pushing them back out of the woods. They're continuing to bring up reinforcements and commit new reserves uh, while forcing the French still further back. And now we've got... Uh, now we've got... Uh, Prussian cavalry attacking Ballard's lines and forcing them into square. So, uh, and they've got a huge battery, just mass battery of artillery. They might not be in a nice neat line, but it's still a lot of guns blasting away. And uh, the French reserves do not seem to be that significant. We got a brigade of infantry back here uh, and a, 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 a brigade of cavalry, but I think they're mostly committed here at this point, while I think we still have a lot of reserves. Yeah, we still have, look at all these brigades back here just doing nada. You know, they're just sitting here chilling. So the only thing I'm worried about is I don't want these Prussians to get too close if they actually activate Jackano, but it doesn't appear like they're moving. They're just sitting there re relaxing. They're uh, obviously in reserve. I want Jackano to stay where he is. So, uh, 4,500 points for below. He's still kicking the Jesus out of these French and continuing to push forward. And, you know, you haven't really seen me do anything. I'm just going to, at this point, I am going to advance his attack a little bit, I think. Or maybe not. No, his attack is still pretty far north. Uh, of where he is, so no. We'll just keep letting him do his thing. I don't want to push his attack point further further north until uh, he really has pushed a lot of these French back and has kind of the attack kind of stalls out and needs to be kind of machinelled. But right now, they're still heavily engaged in these woods here. You can see skirmishes just running all over the place. And the French forces are being depleted. You can just see there isn't as much in front of us as there was, you know, even 40, 40 minutes ago. All right, so I am moving a skirmisher unit to forward to screen uh, to screen this cavalry that this square is shooting at. But you know that's just an obvious like wh why would they why would they do that why would they be set up behind the cavalry? They should be in front screening the cavalry and shooting at the square and, and you know that's the whole point is the, the cavalry forces the French unit into square and then the skirmishers tear up their front. So okay, but I'll take them back I, I, off of a I'll take them off of TC once they are where I want them to be, and you know that will hopefully minimally affect the AI's attack plan. I moved one skirmisher unit. You know, that can't be a, a huge impact. And then as soon as I move them, I put them back under AI control. So yeah, I definitely want to not get involved with the AI's attack as much as possible. All right, so some of these, uh, one of these French squares has moved further forward, so... Uh, I just want to back some of my cavalry off a little bit, just to get them out of musket range. Yeah, 
And uh, maybe I can move these squadrons out of the range. They're, they're kind of in front of the artillery, though I think the artillery is on a ridge and high above them. Uh, but we'll move them out and open up the gun's field of fire even more so they can really start pounding on the, that square out there. So yeah, this battery ought to be able to just mollywop this square now. And yeah, we're pulling, uh, pulling some of our units back. And oh, Van Dam is in trouble. We are now, uh, that is indeed LaFolle's division that we've been uh, kicking the bejesus out of up here. And we're now intercepting courier messages. So the French are definitely in trouble. They're being pressed by the Prussians to the, from the south, and uh, they're just being stonewalled by our troops to the west here. And uh, Deruta's division seems to be all out of steam. So uh, yeah, going briefly going back to what I was talking about before, uh, with um, you know how I, I uh, my journey through uh, Scourge of War Waterloo here. Like I said, when I first came out, I was disappointed, and I had wanted a Civil War game. And the irony of that is that you know three years later, Scourge of War Waterloo is absolutely my favorite of all the Scourge of War games. Um, in fact, it would be hard for me now to go back to um, Civil War games because by comparison, Civil War tactics just seem so much simpler to me now than uh, after learning Napoleonic, which is a far more complex set of rules and, and uh, battlefield uh, requirements that, um, you know, when I play the Civil War Scourge of, War, uh, Scourge of Wars now, they just seem so much simpler in that it's basically just line line infantry versus line infantry shooting at each other. You know, uh, you know, it's hard to really make artillery that effective in that game in those games because the range of muskets is such that it's really tough to bring artillery safely into cannon their range. So they just don't play as big a part. Uh -huh in terms of being a, a really serious offensive weapon like they, they can in, in, in Scourge of War Waterloo because the musket range is, is uh, only 150 yards in this game and it's, I don't know, it's like 250, 300 yards in the Civil War games. Like, it's really out there, you know, much greater than the canister range of, uh, of, of artillery. Uh, so it's hard to bring Civil War cannons to... Uh, to canister range safely without getting your artillerymen really shot up because the musket range is just so much greater. Um, and the batteries are smaller too. You know, it's, it's mostly four and six gun batteries. Uh, you don't really see a lot of these big eight gun batteries. So everything is just kind of bigger and better uh, when it comes to Napoleonic warfare. I think it's grander, it's more complex. Um, you don't get lost in a lot of this wooded terrain. There's this big open field. So uh, what initially was a disappointment to me ended up being my favorite board game of all time. Go figure. So uh, we got a little cavalry melee going on here between the uh, French who are withdrawing and uh, our Landwehr Cavalry Regiment. Uh, oh, they surrendered. Oh, my. So uh, we have a battalion forming square here, probably because of this cavalry right here. So uh, the AI knows when to form square when there's cavalry present. And uh, we really have a whole bunch of these units formed up in square now because of all this Prussian cavalry out here. And uh, yeah, because the AI is handling things so well over on the Bulo, Grushi front, you know, I can afford to really keep an eye on my area of the Allied lines and make sure that if Napoleon tries anything sneaky, we're totally ready for it. 
and uh, do some supply wagon runs, keep our guns firing. These guns are actually, you know, purely by luck. I really didn't go down to ground level and really, like, really look for the best place to place them. Uh, but it turns out I just got lucky and placed them in good spots, and uh, uh, they've been racking up points. So here we have a shot kind of from east to west down uh, down the Allied lines here. You can see uh, my formations are pretty much all intact from what I set them up at the beginning of the battle. Uh, they really haven't been pressed. They're in good shape. We've got our front line of skirmishers. We've got our line units flanking our batteries. We've got our assault columns behind them and our cavalry squadrons in reserve. So just layers and layers of defense that the French would have to get through. And we've kind of withdrawn the right part of our line back behind the ridge here just to protect it from artillery losses. Uh, can't really withdraw this because they're still holding off some of the remnants of Milhouse cavalry here. It looks like there's only three squadrons left. And eventually they'll kind of all run off. And uh, again, all this cavalry out here that's, you know, trying to attack Hougamont, they really can't because I have one square in the in the courtyard there that's just, just kind of stonewalling them. So look at, look at Bulo. Still pushing forward. You can see we, looks like we greatly outnumber what's in front of us at this point. We've really put a wallop on them. These guys are doing fine. They're just chilling. Keeping this cavalry at bay. There's no more infantry out in the woods that I can see. None of our forces are engaged. So the fighting at Hugomont has really, really died off. But uh, we're getting late in the battle at this point. It's now 6.30, almost 6.30 at night. Uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of these places that have been, you know, in uh, kind of continuous fighting for hours and hours have now just started to cool down because there's just, there's just only so much that human flesh and bone can take over the course of hours. And just eventually, it, it just it just peters out. I don't know where the heck that supply wagon thinks it's going, but that's a ridiculous journey for it to make. We'll just bring them up and plop them behind this gun battery in case they need it. And all the while, guys, while I'm doing just scrolling around my lines and doing whatever it is I'm doing, that Prussian attack is still going on. So, you know, that's uh, that's also kind of the beauty of having a game where you can you can put some of your troops under AI control and let them carry out a battle or carry out an attack for you. Is that it just frees you up to do a multitude of other things while that's going on and not have to worry about it because the AI is controlling it. Um, so long as you understand that it's just it's going to be more messy and more chaotic than if you were controlling the units yourself, um, it's still just you know it's one less thing you have to worry about. I'm not worrying about it at all. I'm letting the AI completely carry out that attack, and you know apart from it being just chaos, all I need to do is click on below the core commander, and I can instantly see how he's doing overall. So, oh, we got some more reserves coming forward here, some more infantry. And like I said, this is why the AI does it. It holds units in reserve for later on. And uh, it will, you know, it has its own idea about when and, and where to commit those troops. And uh, it looks like it might be sending them towards Ballard's Brigade. If they come forward to attack Ballard's Brigade, I will probably assist them with some of my cavalry to keep those units in square while that infantry move forward and attacks them. So, uh, yeah, Bulo's got 5,000 points now. Uh, he's inflicted 5,000 casualties, and he's taken about 2,000 casualties. Now, that is a lot more casualties than I would have taken had I been controlling the attack. It certainly wouldn't have been anywhere near 2,000 casualties. Uh, but it also wouldn't have been as exciting to watch because uh, I would have mopped the French up very quickly. 
Uh, and, you know, it probably would have routed a lot of them, and it would have been over before it really ever got to the point of looking exciting. That's just the way my attacks are. You guys have seen how I carry out attacks. Uh, you know, but I, I, you know, I just didn't want to commit to micromanaging a, a whole core attack when I still have Wellington's lines to look after. And, uh, you know, the only real goal I had for uh, uh, Bulo's troops were just to engage Grushi and keep him from from interfering with my allied thing that I've got going on on the Mont Saint Jean Ridge. There, I just didn't want him. I just didn't want to deal with him with those troops. You know, so. Uh, I've said before in other videos that the AI is perfectly capable of carrying out an attack. You've seen me do it in other uh, scenarios where uh, I, I, I assigned AI, uh, forces to AI control and had them carry out attacks that, you know, uh, I didn't just personally need, needed to control every aspect of it. Uh, in the Prussian Ligny scenario, you saw me send like two cavalry divisions forward to uh, counter Pajol's cavalry uh, when it started to move into the move off the left flank of Ligny. Um, you know, I let that. You know, I let the AI carry that entire attack out to repulse Pajol's forces. You know, even when I'm even when I'm a t uh, assaulting like a a, a, a victory point uh, spot or something, I, you know, if it's a big enough attack, I still might let the AI carry it out and then you know capture the objective and then slowly start taking command of the forces as uh, as they come up and you know then start to slowly micromanage the battle until I end up controlling all the troops myself. Uh, you know, I have various ways of doing it depending on the scale of the attack. There does come a point where an attack is too big, where it's tough to micromanage kind of every single brigade all at once on the attack. So sometimes it's actually useful to let the AI carry out an attack and then slowly start to take command of your troops uh, as uh, as the attack progresses and as those as the objectives are achieved. Um, you know, and then uh, on the on the defense, you know, I tend to. To, to always take control of everything because my defensive formations are just much stronger than anything the the, the AI has on in, in, in terms of its defensive tactics. Um, its defensive tactics are basically the same as its attack tactics, except it'll just wait until enemy units come within closer distance to them. You know, so uh, you know it doesn't do things like. Uh, just sit tight and let its artillery do all the work like I do. Uh, so, you know, on the defense, I, I, I consider it more important to take charge of troops than, than necessarily on the attack, if the attack is on a really grand scale. You know, like if I'm attacking with an entire corps all at once, uh, you know, I, I might let the AI control a lot of that, and then I'll take over at key points of the attack. Uh, you know, and eventually all the troops will end up uh, uh, under my command. But, you know, that will probably be, you know, after the attack has accomplished its objective, and I'm, I'm chiefly switching over to the defensive at that point. You know, once you capture an objective, you just need to hold it. So uh, it does appear that these Prussian uh, troops are are moving out to engage the. Uh, French troops of Ballard, and uh, I see that they're heading for them, and uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to use my cavalry to assist them by keeping them in square. So here they are; they're they're moving forward, and it looks like they're continuing to move forward. They're moving out in assault column, and as long as if they're going to keep moving forward towards the French here, I'm going to move my cavalry forward because. I can force them into square and really give those Prussian units uh, the advantage. So we're pushing out of the woods now. You can see that this looks to be the extent of the French reserves. One brigade and one cavalry unit. And we are just continuing to machinelle here and move forward. More troops coming forward. We've got this brigade moving forward against the, the 
remnants of Ballard's Brigade. I'm sending my cavalry to help them. And uh, Bulow has uh, nearly 5,300 points here. He's doing good. He's definitely doing good. So here you can see uh, we have a, a Prussian brigade that's moving forward towards these French. And I'm uh, here's my cavalry moving out to assist them. Uh, and really what I want to do is just use that cavalry to uh, sort of force the French into square while those Prussians attack them. Uh, and that's the general idea. However, we are about to reach 1830, and that will bring this video to a close. So uh, we have somewhere around 280,000 points, uh, nearly closing in on 300,000 points. So an exciting video. Grushi did, did indeed show up. We, uh, we held him off with our forces long enough for the Prussians to come up, and uh, the Prussians uh, charged headlong into those woods and have really been... Uh, giving Grushi uh, a beaten, and uh, we're continuing to rack up points from our objective. So, only two more hours uh, left in the battle, uh, and in the next video, I expect we will see uh, an attack from the French Imperial Guard itself, and uh, and we'll continue seeing how uh, how uh, Bulow's Prussian Corps continues to press Grushi's forces. So that's it for now, guys. Take it easy.